From the military to the farm. Ag in the big city. City kids learn about gardening and mealworms and guacamole. Those stories and more in USDA Week in Review. Targeting the people who are willing Military to veterans came to USDA to talk about getting more former military into farming and ranching. We do understand the uh, restorative value of linking folks back to the land and, and having a positive experience growing something and producing something. Retired Army Major Dave Biardi was recovering from combat injuries when farming presented itself. There was a Vietnam vet who uh, would come to the hospital. He'd pick me up and take me to his farm. And I didn't realize the healing and therapy that was going on. And after about six months, uh, I, it was transformative. So I told my wife, we're going to get a farm. Retired Air Force Captain Alvina Maynard says she and her husband wanted to live in a rural area and raise alpacas after military life. We wanted to get back to the land. Uh, I have a black thumb, so growing tillable crops was not an option for me. I definitely I love animals and I wanted to do something with animals. And retired Army Staff Sergeant Marvin Frank says ranching keeps him using his military skills keeps the organization skills together, it keeps your listings together, it keeps your timing portions together to make sure that everything is in order to coincide with um, the needs of the farm. By the way, the most recent farm bill contains many incentives to help military veterans start a career in agriculture. And farming is not just for rural areas. Farmers markets are a big deal in the Big Apple. We visited a market this morning, um, even in kind of a cold, damp morning, there were a number of farmers there are selling produce from as far as three hours away, but also some local folks. That's right, local farmers in New York City. And there are a lot of people and not a whole lot of land. So they're having to be creative, they're having to think about being flexible, there's folks using rooftops, they're using every little patch of ground that they have. For more on urban farming, check out the USDA blog. District of Columbia students from Alice Deal Middle School came to USDA to learn about agriculture and get hands-on gardening experience. It was part of Deal Gives Back. We're just giving back to our community because we have a nice school and we want where we go around our school to be nice too. And it turns out that learning outside the classroom is appealing to many seventh graders. We're hanging out outside uh, and working. I think it's fun to just like get down and dirty and just start pulling out weeds. It's a good way to go away from the mental stuff you do at school. It's a lot more fun to like actually be interacting with nature rather than reading articles about it. And the students got to interact with another part of nature, mealworms to be exact, as part of a snack. I think it's kind of gross, but it's a, it's a good way to have more food like in the world. I tried, uh, what are they called, grasshoppers? but I've never tried mealworms. So like I had kind of gotten used to the idea, but it's still a little bit of a shock. And it turns out that mealworms are nutritious and don't stress the environment. You get very high protein content, up to about 45% protein, and the ecological footprint, that is the amount of resources that are used to produce that amount of protein is very, very low. By the way, the mealworms were toasted before going into the guacamole. And in this week's Photo of the Week, Deputy Undersecretary Alexis Taylor speaks at the Foreign Agricultural Services Honor Awards, where FAS employees were cited for their outstanding efforts and contributions. For more photos, go to the USDA Flickr site. That's all for USDA Week in Review. Follow, tweet, and stay informed at USDA.gov.